Right, so in this video today, I just want to go over something that we didn't quite have time to get through in class, and that's a combination of these vector products that we've been dealing with called the scalar triple product. Okay, and as we have with the previous ones, we're going to start with what it means geometrically, and then we're going to derive a formula for it. Okay, so what we've got is we've got three vectors in three-dimensional space. So let's just draw them in a picture. So here's, let's say there's a vector here, one here, and one here. Okay, so let's give, just give them some names, A, B, and C, and we'll start them from the same point. Now, if you squint your eyes and use your imagination, you can see that those define kind of like a slanted box in space. Okay, and that box is called a parallel pipette. I'll spell it out for you in a second. Okay, so there it is. So you can see it's like a cube that's been pushed over in a couple of directions. So that thing is called a parallel epiped. So parallel epiped. So what the problem we want to solve is, is what is the volume of this thing? Well, conceptually, we've got to get our head around uh, how to figure out the volume first before we start relating it to our vectors. So it's actually quite simple. What it is, is it's the, vol it's the space area here. Okay, so let's just presume that B and C form the plane on the bottom of the thing. So it's that base area, I forgot one of my internal sides as well, times the height. Okay, so let's draw on the height. So the height is what you get if you go perpendicularly up from the base. Okay, so that length along there is our height. So the volume just equals space area times the height. All right, so let's just put a few, mark a couple of angles on here as well that we're going to make use of. So we'll call this angle down here, we'll call that theta, and we'll call this angle up here, we'll call it phi. Okay, first problem, what is the base area? Well, base area, we've done that one in class. Okay, just remember the area of a parallelogram, which is what we've got here, is just equal to the length of one side times the length of the other side times sine theta. Alright, that's base times height for that parallelogram. And if you remember from class, that's just equal to the length or the norm of the cross product B cross C. Alright, so far so good. How about the height? Well, the height, we've got a right angled triangle, so if we just sketch that over here, here's H, here's phi, here's a side with length A. You can see that the height is given by H equals, it's going to be the length of one side times cosine phi. Okay, if you don't quite see what uh, how that works, just pause the video, um, draw yourself that triangle, and use trigonometry like you did at high school, just to figure out what that side H must be. Use cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, etc, etc. Okay, so if we put those things together, then what we get is that the volume, again, is base area times height. Let's just substitute in the pieces we've got. So it's equal to the length of B cross C times the length of A times cosine of phi. And actually, what we have here is something that looks like a dot product. Remember, length of one vector times the length of another vector times the angle between them is the dot product. Is that the angle between them? Yes, it is, because if you draw the, the that cross product B cross C, if we just sketch that on our picture as well, remember that cross product is the vector that's orthogonal to both B and C, so it's going to be up like this, if we do it that way around using the right-handedness. Okay, so that angle phi 
is here as well. And so that is the angle between B cross C and our vector A. So that's quite nice. We can just therefore write this as the dot product of A and B cross C. Okay, now there's one little subtlety here that I haven't mentioned, and that and that's that this could turn out to be negative. So if we're literally wanting the volume, we take the absolute value of this expression. Okay, a couple of simple properties. Um, well, actually, you can see that before we do the simple properties, we can figure out the volume of this thing. Essentially, it's just taking two vector products. We do a cross product first, B cross C, and then we do a dot product with that other vector A. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, new page. So let's say we've got the vector A equals 101, B equals 203, and C equals 010. Okay, so what we have to do is we need to figure out the length of A, so the absolute value of A dot B cross C. So we'll start by doing that cross product. B cross C is just equal to, so remember we do our determinant shorthand to figure out what the cross product is. Okay, and again, if you're not comfortable with this, I suggest you just pause the video and figure it out for yourself, but I'll just do it quickly. That's going to be I times negative 3 plus J times 2, it's going to be 0 there, and it's going to be minus, okay, so 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0, uh, plus K times 2. Okay, so if we're going to write it back as a vector with three components, it would be negative 3, 0, 2. Okay, so then we're going then we just figure out A dot B cross C is equal to one O one dot negative three zero two is equal to negative three plus two equals negative one. See so as I said before, it's possible that this triple product which is called a scalar triple product, could come out to be zero, negative. So the volume, volume of parallelepiped defined by A, B, and C is absolute value of A dot B cross C, which is simply equal to 1. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. Now just to finish off with, um, you can figure out volumes of any three vectors like this. I'm just going to give you a couple of properties that you could verify for yourselves um, of this thing. So, you probably can guess that to some extent we can rearrange the operations here. Okay, so here's our property, our first one. A dot B cross C. Now we can shift these things around in certain ways. Okay, so if you imagine that these are sort of lined up in a circle, A, B, C, then we can shift them around in their circle. Okay, so it's like a circ it's called a circular shift of these things, and we'll still get the same thing. So if we were to move everything around by one place, then B would go into A's place. C would go into B's place, <coughs> and A would go into C's place. Okay, we do it again. We get C going where B was. So everything's shifting to the left, and the one from the very end goes back to the far end. We get C dot A cross B. Okay, so... Dismiss that thing. That's one of our properties, so the 
product here is the same depend if we do a circular shift of the three vectors. Okay, um, we can do the dot product in either order because we know that the dot product is commutative. Okay, so we have a dot b cross c is equal to b cross c dot a. Right, so that's property number two, if you like. And the third property that we're going to look at, if we change around the order of the cross product, as you know, b cross c is equal to negative c cross b. So that comes out here as well. Negative a dot c cross b. Okay, so that's probably all we need to know for now about the scalar triple product. So if you get a question asking you to figure out a scalar triple product, or the volume of a parallel pipette, this is the kind of thing that you need to be doing.